on the last video. A drink, huh? Do you have the good stuff in stock? Hmm? It's hard to obtain that certain something around here. I haven't had any for a couple days now. I hope that you guys know what he's talking about, because I do, and it's funny. Actually, I'm starting to go into withdrawal. <laughs> what is it you're talking about, mister? Listen, I run a clean bar. Protein. <laughs> I need a double shot of protein. Give me that protein. Huh? And so, we continue. Hey there, guys. LOI Games, I'm back with some more. Persona 4 Arena. Where we last left off, we met the protein junkie Akihiko, and also Mitsuru from the Ki from the Kirijo Corporation. The Kirijo group. And now we're gonna move onward with Akihiko. Let's see more of his side of the story, shall we? The same day, afternoon. Ah, the familiar music. I think that's Daidara when you enter his shop. I arrive in Inabar earlier than I had planned. There's a lot of time to kill before I need to be at the meeting. In order to feel for to get a feel for the town and what's going on, I decide to walk around a bit. From the looks of it, it's an ordinary countryside town. I can't believe that people think level 4 shadow related cases have occurred to your last year. As far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be any disturbances going on right now. It looks like that unit named Labrys isn't running amok here either. As soon as I stray from the main road a bit, it's mountains and fields as far as the eye can see. The air is clean, the traffic's pretty light, and the town has that going for it in the town and so the town has that going for it i messed that up i butchered that incredibly <clears throat> this would be a great place to go running early in the morning i wait for evening to come while exploring as much of the town as i can it's almost time yes it's almost time my cape flutters in the wind as I shadow box and jog to meet to the meeting area. An interaction on the outskirts of of what this town would call its shopping district. Meeting up in a rural area like this is a bit of a tricky situation. Since the shadow operation does not officially exist, we need to draw as little attention to our mission as possible. Hopefully, we can quickly join up and be on our way so that <clears throat> the residents don't take notice of a bunch of outsiders assembling in their sleepy town. Unfortunately, when I arrived at the meeting point, Mitsuru and the others are nowhere to be seen. Something happened? I doubt she'd run into any trouble she couldn't handle, though. Hmm. Could it be that I'm in the wrong place? There aren't any tall buildings to block my view. So I look in every direction. The only thing outside the shopping district obscuring my vision is a mountain of garbage that looks like it might be scrap heap or a junkyard. I may as well be diligent and head over there just to make sure. Illegal drop point. <clears throat> I enter the area and it's full of all kinds of junk. Cars and household appliances, large and small, are piled into small artificial mountains. I test my footing and begin climbing up the stacked trash. Looking down, I spot a long black limousine that is completely out of place in this small town. I come to the realization and sigh. Of course. They'd stand out no matter where they were, so they could only park here. True enough. Two of my friends are standing by the limousine. A woman decked out in, f in fur coat and a mechanical girl is Misuru and Agis. Right before I call them out, Agis does something bizarre. She extends her right arm towards the TV screen in front of her and... <clears throat> August's hand is passing right through the screen. Her steel fingers aren't just breaking the TV screen. 
They're definitely going inside. Concentric rings of white light are ripping forth from where she inserted her it's hand. It's the same as mine. It's hard to say definitively since this is my first encounter with it, but I believe this reading is from a personality module. Does that mean our retrieval target is inside the TV? I don't understand how or why, but it seems that people can enter that TV. If that's the case, it would be perfect it would be a perfect place to hide stolen cargo. This makes things easier. Huh. Sounds like fun. Two of them look up surprised. Is that Akihiko? Yo. <laughs> I leap off the mountain of trash and land in front of them. You didn't show up at the rendezvous point, so I went looking and found you here. <laughs> this whole TV thing is pretty interesting. Yeah, tell me about it. Akihiko, what on earth are you wearing? Just what were you doing overseas? <clears throat> Didn't I tell you that I was on a training expedition? <laughs> Don't tell me you came here from the airport like that. Does the concept of keeping a low profile mean nothing to you? This is low profile. I take a glance at Mitsuru and I can tell that she's summoning up her coldest stare. This clothing allows me to do much to have much more much better mobility, but I don't think Mitsuru is going to listen to my explanation. Mitsuru san. I believe we have lost the right to complain about that. Yeah, look at you. Do I say I'm Masuda's clothes once again? I couldn't help but sigh. Seeing August has already had already voiced what I wanted to say, so I decided not to make a comeback. Masuda simply shakes, shakes her head and sighs back at me. Seriously, this is what happens when you grow up in a wealthy family, sheltered from the lives of normal people, sheltering from the lives that normal people anyway. live. Anyway. I slam my left fist into my right palm. I guess Sister Yuna, Lapras. She's apparently inside the TV. Inside the TV, sitting on the obscure part of the countryside. Gotta wonder, what else will be waiting for us inside? We can get inside from that TV, right? Then what are we waiting for? Still the same Akihiko. We don't know the situation inside yet, and we'll need a secure means of getting out. So what? If we want to get this Labrys back, someone has to go inside, right? Well, that's... He does make a fair point. Mitsuru's at a loss for words. I know that, I know that I'm voicing my opinion more forcefully than she's used to, but it's what I have to do. I know, I know Mitsuru well enough to know when she needs someone to prod her into action. Wanting to exert control over every situation is a commendable trait, but in certain situations, certain situations, waiting doesn't allow you to seize any more control, and it also gives your opponent more time to prepare. Our target hijacked a plane to throw her into a TV in this town. If we sit on our hands, it's possible we'll be put in serious danger. There is a big possibility there. I lock eyes with Mitsuru and I take a step towards We're different her. different from how we used to be. We made the choice to fight shadows as professionals. That's why I traveled around the world and trained harder than ever. And now that something's actually come up, you're hesitating? We agreed to do this. I'm ready to stake my life on the mission. Three years ago, I had said that it was my duty to help in the fight. But looking back on it now, I know that a lot of it was just for kicks. Seeing myself definitely become, seeing myself definitely become much stronger and experiencing all the personal growth was incredible. Becoming stronger felt like I would satisfy some deep desire within me. And if I died giving my, my all against a really powerful opponent, I didn't really mind the thought of going out like that either. I was honestly fighting for myself more than anything else. But now, something has changed in me. I wondered, I wondered about the world with something in the back of my mind constantly nagging at me. 
something about not having a grip on some part of myself. I know that power. I know that power I want. The power to protect others. But that feeling has always been there. There's still something else though. Something different. A few seconds of silence pass and then Mitsuru's eyes narrow. Her eyes are filled with steely determination. All right, wait right here. I need to go make a phone call first. Okay, but make it quick. That's what I was gonna say, Bao. Mitsuru heads towards the long limousine with a wry smile. I turn my gaze towards the most prominent of the illegal dump TVs. As I reach toward the screen, my fingers sink into in I, the, my fingers sink into it in exactly the same way August did. My fists are ready for action. I bet they are. Excitement wells up in me as a reaction to the new sensation I feel at, from my fingertips. Oh, uh, that's something. Wait, will they see the uh, thing? I wonder. The other members will wait here in the car. Yeah. If we all barge in and something happens, we'll be devastated. Now that you mention it, at least one of us should be staying behind as well. I am not staying. Uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Us three will be plenty. We'll end this in a flash. No problem. <laughs> The same as always. Although, we have no idea what might be waiting for us on the other side. Don't get careless. Right! <clears throat> this situation... It brings back memories. <clears throat> Ready! Why enter the TV? What's going on? So that's where Naoto has been. Also, it seems that they had quite an interesting um, start there. I thought they would see the Midnight Channel first and then go in and investigate. But, whatever. Yes, I would like to place a bookmark here. And I think this is a good place to stop. This is actually kind of short. I would go on longer, but I gotta stop here. Anyway, like and favorite if you enjoyed. Subscribe, become part of the archives, and I'll see you later. Peace.